Dance with your host Yasmina Ramsey, where we explore how world dance expresses the inexpressible and helps us to understand the meaning of our existence. Today I speak with Syrian dance artist Mirvet Bahlawan. She began her journey in gymnastics and found her way to performing for many years with Syria's largest and most prominent dance company, Inanna Dance Theatre. Her true calling has always been contemporary dance, which led her to So You Think You Can Dance Lebanon and Arabs Got Talent. Because of the war in Syria, she finds herself living and teaching in Dubai today. Her passion to express herself through dance and her independent spirit led her past many obstacles along the way. Hello, Mirvet. It's wonderful to meet you, and thank you to Mohammed Hayek for introducing us from Inanna Dance Company in Syria. And I look forward to our chat today. Hi, Yasmina. Thank you for inviting me. Mirvet, you have a fascinating story of starting in Syria with the Inanna Dance Company, and now you live in Dubai and you're teaching contemporary dance. I wanted you to tell us first about when you started dancing what drew you to dance in the first place okay so uh, I started uh, playing gymnastics when I was six years old and I discovered uh, during these years after like last two three years I need something like more feminine and I I was always uh, looking for something more uh, with the music, uh, because in gymnastics we had only one uh, floor work we we have with the music, and I discovered that I like more dancing, uh, more than gymnastics and these stuff things. I was always dreaming about uh, this atmosphere with uh, like dancers, stage, and it was all everything in my mind uh, all the time. After that, uh, the opportunity came like uh, one of from one of my gymnastics teacher. It was uh, like dream come true. Like it was re- really amazing when when he came to me and he told me that you are going to go to this uh, company. It was uh, Inanna Ballet uh, company. So I went there and. Uh, it was the same what I what uh, in my mind, like how I was dreaming about it and uh, imagine how how the atmosphere w- that uh, I was dreaming about. So it was the same how I was dreaming about it. So, like you can say, uh, my dream came true. That's nice, beautiful. And um, so you yeah. joined the Anana Dance Company. Yeah, and yeah, and I joined them. Uh, after 12 years uh, of playing gymnastics. And uh, yeah, I did the audition with the Inanna and uh, they accepted me uh, because I, I, I was playing gymnastics and it was good for me to start dancing. It was helpful, like uh, from, they said it's good. I, I have background like gymnastics and I, I was flexible and it was nice starting with them. Did your family agree with you to dancing? Was there any problems or they were encouraging? In the beginning, no. Actually, I asked them to join. I wanted, uh, I told my mom to go with me, but she refused in the beginning. But after that, I told her I need that and it's nice and it's like gymnastics. After that, uh, they, they saw, we went together and I did the audition and uh, they accepted me and everything was great but after that after like when I started with Inanna Ballet Academy uh, Inanna Ballet company starting doing shows and uh, with costumes and everything on the stage they saw actually the costumes and they refused and they say it's it was really tight and uh, yeah, because uh, my family, they are very, very, st- very strict and that's why they refused in the beginning. But I, I continued and I said, like, it's only like this. So, yeah, it was a bit uh, difficult for me with my family. 
but you prevailed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually, you end up in Dubai. Uh, is that because you moved because the Nana Dance Company moved? Um, was it because of the war? Uh, what, what happened there? Yeah, actually, after uh, after 12 years uh, joining Inanna and dancing with the company, because of the war, they moved to Qatar and I had to stay there studying. That's it. I stopped with Inanna because they moved and I was just studying. And after that, I went to Lebanon to do a competition, dance competition. After six months, uh, when they saw me on the TV and Mr. Jihad, and he invited me to uh, uh, teach uh, at their school in Dubai. So why were you on the TV in Lebanon? Because of the dance competition? Yeah, I was doing shows because I... I did the audition and they accept me uh, uh, from one of, I was one of the top 16 and uh, we did the live shows and I, after the audition, of course, and yeah, I did like four shows, live shows with them uh, in Lebanon, it was in Lebanon. It, I was famous that days and he, he was like, uh, if you can come and uh, teach in my school. And of course, I was um, I was very happy to teach with them and come back with them to work again. The dance competition in Lebanon. This was a dance competition, or was this the show that you were in? Uh, Arabs Got Talent, or or was that later on? No, the... it was actually in 2015. The competition. It was uh, so you think you can dance the Arabic version. Mm, yeah. Right. So they named the show Yalla Nurkos. So yeah, it was uh, for uh, Arab. And did you perform ballet or were you already doing contemporary dance by that time? I was uh, performing, I performed uh, everything. This, uh, so you think you can dance, you have to do like everything. You have to be good with hip hop, ballroom and um, Latin, everything actually. And I did it, Every everything was perfect. So in, in Lebanon, they were so bad uh, when they do these dance shows and any, any program they do, they only think about money and uh, voting and who can pay more and all these things. But all the dancers in that day, he, they, were, they were like, you are the best and we were afraid of you. Uh, you were amazing with everything. The contemporary dance, they were so they were not good enough in Lebanon. So me, I was not good in hip hop, but I did it and it was perfect. So that's why they were saying, we were afraid of you mm -hmm. to win, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after, yeah, after that, uh, th that's why they are not appreciate what they, you are doing, what they don't care. So that's why. So, so Jihad, uh, who's the director of Inanna Dance Company, invited you to teach in his school in Dubai? Yeah, Mr. Jihad, uh, he invited me to teach at his school. We were in Qatar, actually. And we, were, we had shows there, dance show with him. He tested me to teach there in Qatar, of course, because he wants to see if I can uh, if I am good enough to teach or to be a good teacher. So uh, I was good, actually, and I was a bit, I was uh, learning from Madame Albina how she was teaching also and uh, attending her class. So after that, they said, you are ready and you can come to Dubai. And I started with them uh, in 2015. In Dubai? In Dubai. Yes. What was the transformation that happened or how did you come upon making contemporary dance your favorite dance or the one that you like to express yourself the most? Why contemporary dance? Contemporary dance, uh, actually, I was, before we, uh, before they moved from Dubai, from Syria, sorry, the company, uh, I was really, last year, I was really good because I was studying in higher institute of dramatic art. 
and I became better because I started first with Inanna and after I I was taking a lot of classes and also I was really working on myself and I, I discovered myself there that I can I am good in contemporary but more than ballet because ballet it was a bit hard for me to be a, a ballerina because of my body I think or because of I was playing gymnastics and it was really hard uh, not hard that I mean I I find myself more in uh, in, in uh, contemporary dance I liked it so much and it was everybody like saw that like I can I, I was so good so yeah. I started yeah watching more videos and it was my passion so yeah I've watched your videos of you performing and you're a beautiful dancer very engaging thank you and you can see the the combination of those of gymnastics and ballet and contemporary dance all together. You've got your own unique style. It's very beautiful, and you're very flexible. Thank you. And do you feel that with contemporary dance you can express yourself, your person, who you are through contemporary dance more than through gymnastics or ballet? Actually, yes. I, uh, when I dance contemporary, it's like I feel, let's say, when I'm sad, when I am bored, when it's like a medicine for me, like uh, happiness and everything. I feel more confident. I feel more happy, and I feel alive. Like really, it's it's really good uh, when I dance. I mean, I be myself, especially when I create my own uh, dances. How is contemporary dance received in Dubai? Do you have a lot of students that uh, want to learn contemporary dance? Yeah, actually, uh, I was doing like a small dance before we started, like kind of advertisement for the school. And everybody was uh, coming and uh, only for this kind of style to register their kids not only for ballet, actually. They come to to do, because they, they were a, a bit like, they don't know about this style. They were a bit uh, more, they know ballet, gymnastics. I was giving like a combination bet- between gymnastics and uh, contemporary. And it was my, I felt like it's it's my own style. I didn't feel like nobody was in Dubai. Nobody, I think, uh, giving this kind of classes. So tell me about when you you performed for Arabs Got Talent and yes. you did a contemporary dance show. Mm-hmm. And what happened with that? Mr. Jihad told me that they need uh, a dancer. They need someone to perform contemporary dance to do like story or something with uh, like a lyrical dance or something like this. So I was thinking about uh, so you think you can dance like I was I I thought about my first experience because it was also in Lebanon Arab Scott talent I felt like it's okay I can do it one more time no problem then I went there I I knew that they will not be fair enough for this but also it was like on not uh, dance shows not it wasn't a dance uh, competition only singing and all this stuff so I went there and I did the audition and it was good everything was good but the next time I was asking them to do something different and I I asked to bring someone with me to make the show more stronger and different I mean I did the second show I did the semi-final and after that they said it's not uh, not good and it's the same show you did in the audition and yeah I was upset that day but I said no problem like what to do this this is uh, Lebanon and why why do you think they didn't like it is it because of the style of the dance no because they, they liked it but uh, they said it's there is no difference between the first show and this show so I told like I I had to say like I wanted to I asked them to bring something with someone with me or to do something different like uh, 
flying or with the rope, something uh, they can hang. I mean, I I asked them to do something different, but uh, they refused. Yeah. And after, uh, I didn't continue because of voting and all these things again. You were telling me before that you saw the com- on the videos of your dance performance for Arabs Got Dance, there were comments from people that they didn't mm. really understand mm. what you were doing? Uh, yeah. Uh, when I was uh, watching the comment uh, below the, sh- the video on YouTube and Facebook, everywhere actually, is, I didn't find a lot of uh, positive comments because I can understand this uh, Arab people, they don't know more they don't know about uh, contemporary dance. They were saying like, what is this? What, what, what is she's doing? <laughs> I was like, I really, sh- I was shocked, but I can understand they don't know about this. And it's really hard. Nobody can do this kind of style. But uh, yeah, they didn't like it, but it's okay for me. I know they, they don't know about it. But in Dubai, they like it? Yes, in Dubai, uh, they like it, especially parents, when they see this combination of between gymnastics and uh, contemporary tricks and dance, they like it because it's really nice, uh, nice style. They didn't see it before, actually, I think so. And uh, they, I had a lot of students, actually. If they didn't like it, I did I wouldn't have all this, like, 80, 85 students. When you were in Syria, did you also, growing up, did you learn Syrian folk dances? Was it a case of you learning Syrian folk dances, or it was just around you at normal family events? In uh, the company, in Anna company, you mean? No, you, as a, before you started to dance, as a child, okay. in the okay. community or at parties, did you learn or enjoy Syrian folk dances, community dance, maybe Dabke or... <laughs> mm, yeah, actually, no. Um, I was more to this freestyle, contemporary. It was, I, I was enjoying, yes, the fol- folklore and all this, uh, our folklore dance. So uh, all these kind of styles we, I, I have, I learned in Inanna, but... Uh, uh, it was nice because every time you learn and it's all about dancing, you know, it's nothing. I, I don't hate anything, actually. Everything about dancing, I don't hate uh, any kind of styles. I like everything. But the thing that I don't get bored of a contemporary dance. I was lucky to see Inanna Dance Company when they came to Toronto and they were 100 dancers. That's 100 dancers on tour. So I'm sure it was a huge company back home <laughs> when you were doing big shows. Um, and you, you, were with, you were with the company then when you came to Toronto, right? You came here? Yes. Yeah, fortunately. Yeah, I was with them. So it I was know, a nice experience. Yeah, you like Toronto? Yeah, very much. At the end of the show, there was a folklore section with a lot of different mm-hmm. kinds of folklore. It was very different than the rest of the show. So that's why I was asking about the, the folklore. When you were in Syria with the Anana Dance Company, how often did you perform? Well, we would perform every month. Like we were traveling every month, like two times. Every month we have to do something. We have to learn um, something to prepare for, for the next show and the next show. You know, every time we had every year we every month we have a show maybe uh, out of uh, Syria maybe inside Syria but uh, in Syria we had 80 or I don't remember exactly the number 80 shows we did like uh, the name of the show was uh, Sakar Quraysh we did it every day every day like two times every wow. day yeah this is what I remember, but I remember that we, we did it like for four months, I think. Four months, twice a day, same show. <laughs> yeah, I think twice a, way, twice a day, but sometimes we were doing twice a, twice a day. And that was within Syria? Yeah, within Syria. Mm-hmm. I was very lucky because I got to work in Syria quite a bit. And I remember the 
relationship of the government and the community towards the arts, towards music, dance, uh, even my yeah. style of dance, uh, belly dance, mm -hmm. was, you know, you were part of the union, you got paid well, you got treated properly, good, um, made sure that you had rights as an employee, et cetera, et cetera. And I've always been impressed with that. Compared to Canada, we don't have as mm -hmm. good a situation for artists. It may be a uh, oh. freer country in other ways, but um, I found Syria had a much higher regard for artists. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. And I guess Inanna Dance Company would be the equivalent of our National Ballet of, of Canada. So when you're in Dubai, you're not performing as much. No, I didn't because I had to only work. In Dubai, you have to work because it's really expensive uh, life here and everything is expensive. So I didn't have time to perform uh, only with Mr. Shihad, with the company itself. But the company itself is not performing as much, obviously, as they did no. in Syria. No. Uh, I was only teaching and uh, four hours a day and that's that's all what I was doing. I can dance with my students, I can uh, do choreography, I can, but I I am also, last year I did with them my own show, everything was on me, like preparing music and uh, the whole show and uh, costumes, um, yeah, everything was, uh, I had to do everything. Do you, do you enjoy doing that, taking on all that of responsibility? <laughs> yeah, it was really hard last time because every year when I started in Dubai, first and second and third year, I was taking like part from each, from the sh whole show every year we are doing. The, so I was taking like, 10 minutes or yeah 15 but last two years i was taking my everything all these responsibilities it was really hard tough but it, i was enjoying how when you create something with all your students three years old four years old everyone has their own dance and their own music yeah it was so fun and stressful as well but nice have you ever created any choreographies that speak to something very personal about your life or your life story or an experience in your life or is it only a choreographies about the music or more external yeah always i do this actually but one time i did when i was um, in syria mr jihad asked us to do something like to create this, it was first time he, uh, he's, he was asking us. So uh, I did something like um, about myself. I, I was really shy and I was really, I don't talk to others and always like uh, not socialized. I wasn't socialized. So I did something like I put something on my eyes and I started dancing without seeing anything. Uh -huh. But after that, I removed it. <laughs> That's what I want. That's why I went to, so you think you can dance. That's why I pushed myself to dance on stage. Uh, I, I let myself, I let people, like millions of people to see me. So You had a story dancing. to tell. Yes, exactly. You're, so yeah. having something covering your eyes and then you take it off, it's kind of like seeing. Yes. Th this one, this was my first dance I created. Yeah. Beautiful. I have to ask Mirvat, do you have any experience or what is your relationship with belly dance? What do you feel about it? Belly dance? Hmm. Okay, I like belly dance, uh, but because of our culture and my family and you know, all this uh, don't, it's, it's not famous. Like they don't let us to do something like this because of, I think, the costume or I don't know what why this so I like it I tried it before and I was really enjoying this one especially in Dubai I was taking classes in fitness first just to for myself I mean I was working out only 
So I noticed uh, that they have belly dance. And I was taking, I took, like, I tried first uh, one time, then I really liked it. And I was really good. And I was watching myself in the mirror and I said, oh my God, I'm really good. Like I discovered that I didn't know I, I can do like all this it, because it's really hard to isolate like everything, like your waist, your chest, all these things. But it was really nice. After like one month, I became really good. And the teacher, she was asking me to teach and she said like you are really good how you are really good I remember that she asked me that and your teacher where what country is she from Dubai or what country is she from your the the belly dance teacher um actually she was from Syria yeah 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 I remember she was from Syria and there there was another one but she's I Argentine I think so yeah I, I liked it I love it it's amazing. But you'll never perform it publicly. <laughs> no, I can't. I wish, actually, I wish I can perform, but I did it with Inanna, actually. We were performing something like this, but it's more classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. More ballet we influenced. Oriental, yeah, yeah. When you took the belly dance classes in Dubai, the movements from belly dance, did they affect your contemporary dance? Yeah, actually, that's why I think I was good, because... When she asked me how you are good, I told her I can dance. I took ballet, and when I tell, told told her that I, I am a, I I am a ballerina, and I was, I was a ballerina. She said, Ah, that's why because it's all about technique and uh, contemporary dance as well because it's all about freestyle and moving your arms softly and. I think uh, it helped. What, the belly dancing helped your contemporary dance? Uh, or the other way around? No, no, the other way. The contemporary dance helped you to be a, ball- uh, yes. a belly dancer. Yeah, and ballet as well. I, I made the title for you, Breaking Limitations. I felt like you put everything like about my life. Why is Breaking Limitations kind of the theme of your life? Why do you feel that that's the story of your life? When I born till like I joined Inanna, I was really always by myself, staying alone. I don't talk to people and staying with my mom all the time. Even in, in, when I started with Inanna, they, they thought that I am full of myself and I don't talk to anyone. But the fact is I was really scared of people and uh, scared to talk to everyone. So that's why it's about everything. Like I, I wanted to be different, breaking everything, like changing everything in my life to push myself to something I get scared of and traveling by myself, uh, doing things like uh, I worked a lot of uh, about myself. Like I am here now. I feel like I am, I did something good for myself. And what are your dreams? If you could do, if you could dance anywhere in the world, any style of dance with any company or solo, or what would be your dreams dance situation? Oh, actually, before I I had dream to dance in uh, the American version, uh, Arab American. So you think you can dance? Actually, I was dreaming about this, just to not to to do it till the end of course because they are really good just to do the audition i wanted to do to do something not only in syria or the middle east something really in uh, everybody can see and yeah that was my dream about dancing if i want to say what is my dream now i need to be more um like I, I need to learn more still I need before I open my own school or before I teach kids. Of course, I can say also I want to travel the world to discover more about dancing, to see every, every country what they have, yeah, workshops or anything like that. Is there any particular 
teachers or style or choreographers that you want to study with? Not really, but I I don't mind to to work with the famous choreographers in the world. <laughs> it's really hard, but I, I I wish because I am now ready to to learn and because when I grow up I I w- I I will not be able to dance. So maybe I will teach that to my students, my yeah. So if you went outside and learned or did so you think you can dance in America, would you go back to Dubai and teach there? Do you feel Dubai is now your home or would you prefer to go back to Syria? No, I don't feel Dubai is my home actually. And I don't prefer to go back to Syria because I I need to go more like uh, somewhere else to discover something new, not only in Dubai. In Dubai, I think it's limited. You only, te- you can teach, you, they don't have this. Uh, I think Syria is better. We, in Syria, we had a lot of uh, choreographers, you had a lot of professional dancers, they came to Syria and we took workshop with them. They came to Inanna and to the Higher Institute of Dramatic Art. I think it's better. Here, I didn't see, actually. It's only, I don't prefer to continue my life here, actually. And is that because of how uh, the arts or dance is uh, viewed yes, or treated? Because, yeah, because it's, you know, it's limited. Like, I didn't see, like, I searched about something better, better than, better than me. I mean, someone really uh, good, like to take workshop or to perform or I don't know, uh, United States or anywhere else or Canada, I think. I don't know if they have, maybe if I ch- change the place, I think I, I learn more. I don't know. You mean uh, in Dubai, there's not a chance for you to grow as an artist. So you need to get outside. And there was more of a chance in Syria, but you prefer to go and learn something new from another country. Yeah, in Syria, it was before, but now I don't think it's it's good to go there and to have a chance to do something really you didn't see before. But uh, I was always, when the war starts in Syria, my friends always asking me, come to Germany, come to Sweden, come to, they, they take care, they appreciate this kind of art, this, your style, they will help you, they, they will, they, they told me about uh, dancing, so I was thinking about it, but it was hard to go there because of Syrian situation and Syrian people. I don't mind to go out. No, I don't want. Uh, maybe it's better to change every time. I think you have to change. I don't know. Normally, when I, if I talk to choreographers or dancers, I'll ask them about artistic vision or creative process. Or do mm. those terms mean anything to you? Actually, this it's gift from God. I think it's like when I listen to any music I like. If I don't like the music, actually, I don't, I don't feel anything about it. I can't create. It's happening with me now when I want every twice a week, I'm doing every class I have to do new dance. So I have to look for something really, uh, I feel the music. I feel it's really what's inside me. It, everything inside me comes out. So... I think it's gift from God. When I dance, actually, when I, when, when I hear something, it's all about, I think, music. My body moves by itself. Like, I see myself doing, creating something I didn't see before, like, when I want to create. I don't know how. I always ask myself how I, I do this. Like, it's really a gift. I don't know. I think so. What is it you hope to accomplish with your art? How do you wish your audiences feel when they see you dance or when they see your choreographies on other people? I, when I dance, when I start moving my body, I really uh, forget everything but around me. But uh, I, 
I want to people feel what's inside me, you know, what, when, when I feel something. And it's always happened. Because one time I remember I, I wanted to show my friend uh, a dance I, I created. And after I finished, I, I saw her face, she was crying. And it was really, because she was Russian actually, and the music, she, um, I didn't understand the music, but the lyrics, I mean. And she said, oh my God, you are amazing. Uh, that, I think this is, uh, I can deliver what, uh, they can feel what I feel when I dance, I think. Every time, actually, I do something, they, I get na- good uh, feedback. Not about, yeah, wow, it's nice movement or it's nice uh, flip you did. No, they say, when they say uh, you, are, uh, you, are, you have really great feelings, I feel that they felt what I was, how I was dancing and how, what, I fe- what I was feeling. You have anything you want to say or we end it now? I'm happy to talk to you. <laughs> I'm, really, I am happy because uh, I am here alone and um, I'm just working and coming back home, working and coming back home. So uh, You yeah. don't have any family there? Or? No. Oh. Mm. Are your family in Syria? Some of them in Syria and uh, some of them in Saudi Arabia and in Holland and Lebanon, everywhere. <laughs> You're from where? I'm, I'm in Canada. I live in Canada, brought up in Canada. But I spent a lot of time in Syria. For a while, Syria okay. was like a second home to me. I would go every year for three months to work. I didn't know about Inanna Dance Company until after. Angry about that. Why didn't somebody oh. tell me about Inanna Dance Company? I found out about it after. Oh, and, sorry. Uh, but I, the music in Syria is just amazing. The musicians there yeah. are, are amazing. Yeah. Um, I think if there's anything else to talk about, it's just your personal journey. This show, Deeper Dance, I like to speak to artists who are either doing community outreach or have a sociopolitical message, meaning that with their art, they're trying to make change in the world or speak to a deeper spiritual Uh, sense. In your case, I feel like your very existence of you being a young woman living alone in Dubai doing contemporary dance, that alone is a sociopolitical statement. That alone is a statement of mm, a strong woman, uh, Mm. someone who uh, listens to her inner voice and follows her, her like inner light and doesn't listen to what's expected of her or what the world wants of her, and who has also overcome incredible pain, uh, suffering of losing, being separated from your family, losing your country that you once knew to be a beautiful country, uh, having to live somewhere else that you don't feel is your home. All of these things in itself make you a message, just your living your life is, is a big sociopolitical message. Oh. Do you understand? Oh, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah, of course. I, I'm happy to hear that, actually. Mm-hmm. It's uh, like uh, something good. Like yeah. I, I hope, Mirvet, uh, that we speak again in the future. And I wish you all the I best. So. Thank you. I wish you too all the best. Yeah. We'll keep in touch, okay? Sure. Okay. Thank you Take so care. much. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, your host, Yasmina Ramsey, for this week's episode of Deeper Dance. If you would like more information, please check out my website at yasminaramseyarts.com. I hope you join me next week with more fascinating guests and more ideas to ponder inspired by dance.